Welcome to the LAP podcast series, Simply Precise. I am Sabrina Dehati, and my guest today is once again Steve Imba from Oncology Imaging Systems. The last time we talked, he told me about the long-standing partnership with LAP. Today, I asked him about a very different topic, veterinary oncology. How do the LAP laser systems find use in that field? And how does the therapy of dogs, for example, differ from those of humans? Answers to those questions and an even closer insight were given to me by Steve today. Hi, Steve, and uh, welcome back. Hello, Sabina. Uh, good to be back. Steve, I've read that OIS is not only a leading supplier of devices for radiotherapy applications in the UK and Ireland for humans, but also for the veterinary oncology. Um, can you, first of all, tell me a bit about veterinary on oncology in general? Because I have to admit that before this podcast, I had never heard about it. How are patients treated and how do you provide solutions for sick animals? Okay, so yes, veterinary oncology, actually, it's my favorite part of the industry mm -hmm. because it is something that is really, really valuable. It's really great to see pets being cared for in a very special way because, you know, we love our pets and they bring so much to our lives. Yeah. But we, we started working in, in veterinary radiotherapy uh, probably about 15 years ago. And in the UK now, there are, I believe, six centers that treat dogs, cats, and one center treats horses as well with mm -hmm. radiotherapy mainly dogs, and we are using most of the products that we use in human radiotherapy, we are, we are translating into the animal radiotherapy. And mm -hmm. what the products we supply are positioning lasers, we supply the masks for immobilizing the animals, um, the skin markers for image referencing, for treatment mm -hmm. planning, and also the, the radiotherapy couch tops that we use in normal CT scanners and MR machines. The, the way it works is it's very, very similar to a setup with humans. You have a CT scanner, you may have an MR, and you'll also have a, a LINAC, and they will have lasers in to position the, to position the animals. Mm -hmm. but the big difference is with animals, particularly the dogs, they have to be anesthetized for each treatment because okay. they move. So this is the, this is the fundamental difference between a human and the dog when it's having a, a brain tumor treated, for example, is mm -hmm. every single day the dog has to be anesthetized before it can have its radiotherapy. Okay. Now this is not a, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it sounds very tiring. Yes, it, it is. It's 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 a stressful time for for the owner, and it's a mm -hmm. stressful time obviously for the for the pet. Yeah. We are seeing really really good results now. And we have just completed a project in uh, the small animal hospital at the University of Glasgow, which mm -hmm. is having a new LINAC installed. It's just had a brand new CT scanner. And mm -hmm. we put in a, a Dorado Nova 1 system for patient positioning and the carbon fiber couch top. And we are providing all the masks and all of the other immobilization devices for, for the pets. So this is a really exciting project for us. I believe it's a probably a different kind of joy when you when you're healing pets, right? Because I mean it's it's the human's best friend, that's what they say. Like it's a different member of the family, I feel like. So Absolutely. It yeah. it is and to be honest, I never really thought about it like that until the first time I went into a, a veterinary cancer center. Mm -hmm. And then I saw what the relationship between the pets and the owner was and the interaction between the nurse and the therapy radiographer or the oncologist mm -hmm. the whole team completely understands the value of the pet in, in the in the family life and that's yeah. that's something that's quite amazing it's really special sounds really beautiful to me yes steve you said the main difference is that the the dogs have to be sorry what was the word anesthetized anesthetized Yes. Th that's that's the only difference between the treatment of humans and animals? Um, pretty much because we, we are using the same immobilization masks, the same skin markers and the same CT scans and the same LINACs mm -hmm. for, for treating them. The, the process involves 
we have to shave quite a bit of the fur off to put the okay. skin markers on or the lasers on. But other than that, yes, anesthetizing is the is the main thing. Okay. And you also use the same devices? Yes. Yeah, it's it's there's nothing particularly special especially made for for the animals it is more adapting something that is already available okay i i'm actually very amazed by that i thought that this would be two totally different uh, oncology departments yes you would think that wouldn't you and, and it's quite it's quite normal to to have thought that because you just think the things are so completely different but obviously the biology of a of a tumor yeah responds the same way to 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 a linac whether it's in a in a dog's head or a human head yeah. yeah or at least very similar you know so immobilizing the patient is a very similar process we have to keep the patient still and reproducible yeah. on a daily basis so we have to have good headrests good lasers uh, how do the lap laser systems find use in in the veterinary oncology in a very similar way to the way we use them in a, a human hospital, we mm -hmm. use the lasers to reproduce the position of the patient. Mm -hmm. We also use the lasers for the initial CT scan. So we mm -hmm. can actually look at the images of the CT and we can localize where the tumor is. Mm -hmm. And then we can shave part of the fur off of the, off of the dog. And then we can mark The, the the beam entry points where we're going to set the lasers to so it's very very similar okay. and very very straightforward but it is a critical part of the of the procedure well, why well the, the again the going back to the things of quality and the quality and the stability of the product is so important that every day when they bring the animal in and they set it up they need the lasers to be in the correct position, calibrated yeah. correctly and stable. And this okay. is this is actually a real achievement in the veterinary oncology because when they're bringing in the large stretchers, if they've got a large dog, um, you know, we have to make sure that the, the lasers are not bumped by the trolley or yeah. by the uh, anesthetic machine because there's a lot more machinery around the bed mm -hmm. when you're setting up the, the patient than there is with the human. Yeah, that's really interesting it's something that I really, I really love being involved in. We've, we've been involved in some really interesting research projects that yeah. have helped, uh, that have helped studies on um, tumor growth in pigs um, to understand how that might translate into human radiotherapy going forwards. Mm -hmm. And we've used, we use lasers and vac bags for setting up the, the animals then for when they're having their the research study so it's a, it's a really it's a really vital site whether it's whether it's veterinary pet pet oncology or whether it's really yeah. veterinary research oncology both yeah. sides are really important and being involved with them with 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 the lap is 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 great fun actually that's good to hear well steve thank you again for that interesting insight into this uh, oncology part that I had never heard of before. Oh, it's, it's absolutely great. I, thank you very much. And, you know, just so you know, there are, I think in the world, there are now 200 linear accelerators treating animals with radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. So the market is growing all the time. And yeah. people will invest more money in their pets than they do in themselves. I believe. <laughs> So I think that gives you an indicator of where people were rather, rather things, you know, happened. Yeah, that's very true. Well, thank you, Steve. And, and have a nice day, I guess. Thank you ever so much, Sabrina. It was good talking to you again. It was good talking to you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the LAP podcast. We hope you will join us for the next episode. And for more information, visit lap-laser.com.